right now you might not know the right people you feel and you might not have this in place and that in place but you better get your confession in place if you get in place that God I make a decision today that I am not going to walk in curses I'm walking in the blessing because of what Jesus did on Calvary I have a right to be blessed is there anybody in here besides me that's got a right to be blessed so the price to get me and you out was that he had to become what we were. So he became the sin. He became the curse. For the scripture goes on to say, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus removed the curse from us, but I have to decide to walk in the blessing. Even though the curse has been removed, I can still walk like I'm cursed. So I've got to make a decision. Now, we said in this message that I'm calling this decide blessings. Decide blessings. I want you to understand the word bless and blessing in the uh, scripture because it's a very important word. The Hebrew word for bless is the word barak, B-A-R-A-K. It's one of the seven Hebrew words for praise. Uh, this particular word, is expressed by a person who kneels and who gives acclamation to the one that they worship. It's described as blessing the Lord. The word goes further though. It's not just me to God. This word bless also as it's moved to blessing moves from just me kneeling before God and blessing him to now God speaking a blessing over my life. So the word blessing literally is a benediction. It's a benediction. It's God saying, here is my final word concerning you. My final word. Now I want you all to understand something. There is nothing else to be said about you. I'm going to say this again. There is nothing else to be said about you. Now here's what people will do. People will come and remind you of what God said about you. People will come and people will give you a prophetic word that is already something God has said about you somewhere in eternity. But there's no new words that are going to be spoken concerning you. Every word spoken about you from here on out is a reminder of a word already spoken concerning you by God. So God said, I have given a benediction on your life I have declared your ending and here's what benediction also means it means favor somebody say favor, favor. benediction means favor and to walk in the favor of God is to walk under the benediction of God God's decree his declaration over your life listen let me say something else to you about blessing Blessing has nothing to do with feeling. You may not feel blessed. Blessing has to start between your ears. It will not start in your pocket. It's got to start between your ears. Because people, the reason why it doesn't manifest in their pockets is because in between their ears ain't healthy. Until I can get what's between my ears to agree with the word of God, my pockets will continue to manifest a lie. Is there anybody in here right now that don't mind telling me in this room that right now your pockets are trying to lie to you? Oh, come on. Right now your checking account is trying to lie to you, but the Lord has put a blessing. Somebody say a blessing. And that blessing is going to manifest in your life. Look at Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 22. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 22. And let's see what the word of God has to say concerning the blessing of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 22. Here the word of God says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. The blessing of the Lord. You got Proverbs 10, 22? Come on and read it with me. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And addeth no sorrow with it. Now that word sorrow speaks of toil. It's not just disappointment. But when he says it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. He's speaking about 
when the blessing is on you, it's not going to bring you into a season of heavy toil. You're not going to be killing yourself trying to get this to manifest. God took that out. He took that out of the blessing. The blessing is going to be so that when you move in the direction that God is saying move, he will have already done for you in that direction what you need done to accomplish his will. Is there anybody here today that's trying to do something that God showed you? See, I'm going to tell you right now, you're wasting your time trying to do what you saw. You've got to do what he showed you because if God showed it to you, what he showed you is already accomplished. And this thing, as you move toward it, won't be crazy toil. The blessing makes rich. The benediction spoken over you is what's going to make you rich. The fact that the king of kings and the lord of lords said it that's what's going to make you rich you're going to walk into the room with somebody and they're going to look at you and they're going to see God's blessing I'm going to say it again they're going to look at you but they're going to see the blessing of the Lord Sometimes you're going to be in amazement at what people are going to do in your life. And the reason they're doing it is because they saw something that you didn't even realize was visible. God will make his blessing on your life so visible that when people sit across a table from you, they will sense the blessing of the Lord on you. And before they know it, they will be saying, what can I do to help what you're trying to do? And the reason why they're doing it is because the manifestation of the benediction happens at surprising times. You never know when this thing is going to manifest in your life. Here you are going through a difficult season and look like stuff is just falling apart. And meanwhile, it's not falling apart. God is setting you up. If we could just get what's between our ears to agree with what's in his word, we are not getting ready to have a demise. We're getting ready to see a rise. I wish somebody in this room realized that God's trying to take you somewhere that your mama couldn't take you, your daddy couldn't take you, but the blessing can. The blessing can take you where money can't get you. Right now, you might not know the right people you feel, and you might not have this in place and that in place, but you better get your confession in place. If you get in place that, God, I make a decision today that I am not going to walk in curses, I'm walking in the blessing because of what Jesus Jesus did on Calvary I have a right to be blessed is there anybody here besides me that's got a right to be blessed <laughs> hallelujah because of what what the Lord did in your life he, he did something that opens up blessing to me and I can't help but be blessed look at Romans chapter 15 if you will for just a moment Romans chapter 15 Hallelujah. Now, I didn't read this verse in the earlier service, but I'm reading it in this one. Romans chapter 15. Romans 15, verse number 28. Verse 28 and 29. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. And I am sure when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now, the word blessing there is a Greek word, eulogia. It's, we get our word eulogy from it. In other words, Paul said, something has been spoken over my life, and wherever I go, I carry it. And he didn't just tell these people, I'm coming down there. He said, I'm coming in the fullness of the blessing. Now, here's what I wish somebody in this room would grab a hold of right now. When you get up tomorrow morning, you need to stop going places in the fullness of confusion, in the fullness of frustration, in the fullness of doubt. It's time to get up and go in the fullness of what the Lord has put on your life. Is there anybody in here got a blessing on you and know that God put it on you? You need to go somewhere carrying that tomorrow in its fullness. He said, 
He said this with confidence now. This is not just uh, somebody just talking uh, out their head, don't know what they're saying. This man is speaking in confidence. He said, there is no question, verse 29, I am sure, I am sure that I'm coming with the fullness. I'm sure. What to God that what you're doing right now, that business, that idea you have, that job, that, that invention, that whatever, what to God that you approached it just like that? I am sure when I come to you, I am coming in the fullness of the blessing. How many of you in here today can handle that? I'm coming. Listen, I'm not, I'm going to preach today in the fullness of the blessing. If you sing, you ought to sing in the fullness of the blessing. There's a mime concert tomorrow night. They ought to mime in the fullness of the blessing. We should not be doing anything like we're not in the blessing of the Lord. When I stand, people should know that I'm walking in the blessing. Stop looking like a beggar and acting like God hasn't done anything for you and rise and walk in the fullness of the blessing. Somebody ought to give God a praise in here right now. No, 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 not a patty cake. I said somebody ought to give God a praise in here right now. In the fullness of the blessing. In the fullness of the blessing. Now, let's go to Galatians 3 again. You were there. Now, let's look at one more verse in Galatians 3. Galatians 3, 13. You read before. and Let's look now down to verse number 13 and 14. We read about what the transfer was. Let's see and let's close this out today. Galatians 3, 13. He says this, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How, can, how many of y'all can handle that? Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Can you handle it? I've been redeemed. I, somebody say, I'm no longer under a curse. Come on, shout at me. I'm no longer under a curse. Come on, somebody shout. I'm no longer under a curse. I hear you. Can you handle? No longer. After this day, stop looking at your money. Acting like you're under a curse. If you're under a curse, it's between your ears. Because he redeemed you. Verse 14, read it with me. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. That's us. That's the people who didn't have a God. That's the people who weren't Jews in flesh. The blessing. And not only that, but that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now listen, the promise of the Spirit is not just the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Spirit takes us right back to Genesis 12. Everything he spoke to Abraham, he said, through faith, you're going to receive all of that. But you got to open up your heart to say, it's my right to receive it. It's my responsibility to receive it. I am not going to stand up here and preach and preach out of less than the fullness of what the Lord has given me. Somebody say, I'm going to use everything I have. Put your hands together and give God praise today. Everything I have. Everything God gave me, I'm supposed to use it. The blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord, we read in Proverbs 10, 22, it makes rich. It doesn't bring any sorrow with it. It makes rich. It makes rich. It makes rich. It makes rich. I dare somebody to begin to declare it out your mouth. It maketh rich. It maketh rich. Come on, say it a few times. It maketh rich. 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 Come on, some of y'all scared to say it. You so want to be broke. You so used to not having. Come on, open your mouth. It maketh rich. It maketh rich. It maketh rich. Wealthy, 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 wealthy. Bible says he gives us power to get wealth the blessing the blessing I'm not supposed to come up second I'm not supposed to be last uh -uh. the Bible says he makes us the head and not the tail a lender and not a borrower somebody say the blessing does it it maketh rich and doesn't add sorrow to it. Is there anybody in this room right now that can stand the hand of the blessing? I said, is there anybody in this room right now that can stand the hand of the blessing that makes rich and doesn't bring sorrow with it? God has made a decision. He's going to bless your life with favor. He's already released it. And so God ain't going to say anything new. He's going to remind you of what he's already done. Is there anybody on this side of the church that can handle that tomorrow you are unstoppable? Unstoppable.